What are some of the principles associated with uh, these six stages of the consciousness cycle? The, the sensory system connects us to the universe. We see when we, there's research on remote vision where you can see, imagine, use your imagination to see some distant place and imagine what's there. Well, what the research shows is that when you're imagining that place and when in your mind's eye you actually see what's actually there, there's measurable quanta of energy produced in that location. So you are actually where you see. When you see the stars, when you're really seeing the stars, you are really there. Our vision isn't just in our head. It's, it is an image that's produced in the eye and transmitted to the brain. Yes, we're not saying that's not true, but we're saying it doesn't stop there. When it's happening in your visual cortex, your spirit body is present and that's what's seeing and your spirit body is made of these spirit minerals which are present locally in your body with a little over half of their mass and four-ninths of their mass is out in the universe going wherever you're seeing actually being there it's a bridge it's a it's it's a wormhole to that thing that you're seeing and again that can be measured the other time that that's measured is with remote healing when you're intending change in that remote location. When the change actually is happening, when it's effective, there is an actual measurable energetic quantum change. And that's something that we clearly need to understand more and we need to bring out this kind of science that supports the fact that we are immortal beings. We are transcendent beings. We are universal beings. We're way more powerful than we know. There's more energy in your spirit body that stays alive when your body dies than was released in Hiroshima with an atomic bomb. That's how powerful you are. Many times more powerful than that. And it's a constructive power, the power of love, the power of coherence, the power to affect positive change. The second principle is presence. In the, in the, we want to be present in the fire element, in the heart. It's the principle of presence. So the principle of connectedness with our senses and the, and the metal element, because the metals are not just metals, they're condensates in the spirit realm. That's why they have these qualities of being able to move in and out of material objects, so we can't really quite see them. Maybe sometimes we can, or they can materialize or be immaterial, or they can go from here to there as a superfluid, or they can dematerialize here and, and transport quantum leap into another location because of the nature of the elements that make them up, the transition metals and a non-metallic Bose-Einstein condensate-like state at body temperature because they're not thermally coupled. That's why it's, it's the real dark matter. Dark matter isn't necessary to understand the, the movement of the, the cosmos, uh, if you look at it from an electromagnetic perspective, it's a plasma, and plasmas in, in the laboratory move exactly like the galaxies on, on their own scale, their fractal scale. But why, why would that be? I believe there is dark matter, but it's not the dark matter that physics is looking for. It's the dark matter of consciousness of the, of the spirit. If we look at the shape of the dark matter in, in the universe, for example, according to the conventional physics, it takes exactly the same shape as the neurons in our brain. It makes sense if we're living in the image, if we're created in the image of the divine, of the, the, the transcendent, non-local uh, sentience, then this is, we'd see that image everywhere we look, from the, the small to the great. Moving from the presence, being present in your heart, being connected to your senses, we move to the thought, the, the consciousness of thought in, <clears throat> in the earth element. And the principle here is coherence. We create this laser-like coherence of, which is a, like a linear, uh, like a, a laser light is created as a linear 
uh, light out of a, a laser, just like out of a, out of a uh, mitochondria in your cell, that, that most of them live on the microtubules, and those microtubules act as a linear transport mechanism, a light pipe, a fiber optic, for the coherent laser light that comes out of the, the bio photons that come out of the mitochondria. So our thought form in linear in language is creates this laser-like quality of coherence. The water element is uh, reflective of the principle of cellularity. Each, each cell, for example, cell, when a cell divides into two, that's, that's an image of that choice point that we have in, in so many, in every level in, in, in the universe. In, in our consciousness, we act, we make an act of the will, we make our choices, we navigate, we say yes or no, we say right or left, and we navigate, we make choices. And, and that's a cellular thing in of itself, of each choice. And each choice is made up of choices. The choice for an energy to be just a field or to, uh, to reduce itself to a, pr a local presence of uh, quantum is another example of, of that cellularity. So we're made up of that kind of cellularity. Every electron, every photon that's a photon, not just a field, every uh, phonon of sound, and, and these photons and phonons uh, in, the, in the spirit body are the consciousness that's held in the grail, the, the, the holy vessel of consciousness, the immortal spirit body. With the wood element, we have the quality of, or the principle of transcendence. That, that like I said, light, when we, when we see that star, we are actually there. We're actually part of the star, part of the energy field that is that star. And, and finally, the ultimate transcendence completing the cycle to the, back to the metal element where we started is the principle of non-locality. Of you are here and now, and yet who you truly are is your future self, I'll call it, but this future self is ultimately beyond time, beyond space, and has always been. Now, if we're going to heal ourselves, we want to keep in mind who we are. We're not just the body. We're not just here to heal the body. We need to heal the body, the mind, and the spirit. And they're not separate. They work together. The mind is the link between, in both di the bi-directional link, between the body and the spirit. So what are the qualities of medicine? Medicine should be natural. It, it's what our body, the, the epigenetic stimuli that our body is designed for is the natural universe in its natural state. So we want to heal the earth so that we can heal ourselves. We want to put ourselves in natural environments, restore the qualities of the natural energy, energies and chemistries around ourselves. It needs to be functional. Functional medicine works with wellness rather than illness. When we change I to we, we go from illness to wellness. The medicine we need is biological. It works with biology, not working on it or against it. You know, we don't have too many organs, so we need very much less surgery than, than we're using. We need very few synthetic chemical medicines, pharmaceuticals, that never existed in our genetic history, that we're not possibly in any way, there, there's no theory on which we could be adapted to those. They never existed for our ancestors. Our medicine needs to be integrative, to work together on all these different levels. And it also needs to be sequential and recognize where we are in the sequence, in the process of healing. It's a, it's a dynamic process. It's a changing process. So the medicine that you need now, if it's truly medicinal, will be a catalyst for change so that you will heal and will not need that same medicine. Nutrients, of course, and, and healthy energetic fields. We need a healthy environment 
to sustain life. And we can enhance that, and we want to, and we want to sustain those enhancements. But the actual medicines that are catalysts for change, those usually change from one month to another, from one moon cycle to another. Another qu important quality of our medicine is it needs to be holistic. It needs to take in the whole of what's happening and not treat one part in isolation, where now we're creating other problems for other parts and then we're treating side effects and, uh, and the whole gets unhealthy. The, there was one study, there's very few holistic studies in Western medicine. There was one done in England on hypertension. And what they found was that while all the physicians agreed that, that pretty much universally all their patients were healthier because their blood pressure scores were normalized. They took high, people with high blood pressure, gave them synthetic drugs, as is normally done in Western medicine, to bring that blood pressure down into the statistically normal range without asking the question, why is it high? Is the body doing something intelligent? Is it trying to solve a problem? Like, is it trying to filter toxic blood through the high pressure filter of the kidneys? And so they're giving drugs that reduce the act action of the heart to make that high blood pressure. So now you still have toxic blood. They're not asking those questions. But they ask the question to the, the patient and the family and people in the community, the, uh, what is your impression of your well-being, your energy, how health, healthy, how well are you? And all of those people were coherently in agreement with each other and completely polar, polarly opposed to the, the view of the physicians who were looking at the numbers. The numbers are normal, therefore you're healthy, healthier. Everyone else said, no, he's not as well. He doesn't have as much energy, he doesn't feel good, he's not interacting in the community as much. We're stopping the heart from having enough energy to try to solve a problem that's really the kidneys. What we need to do is treat the kidneys to get them, like change the filter. Don't, don't lower the oil pressure, change the filter, change the oil, clean the blood. Now we can function and the blood pressure will come down of its own accord because the body is self-governing, self-regulating. It's what we call physiology. These are feedback loops in, in, in systems theory. These are negative feedback loops. That's a positive thing in biology, a good thing. The negative feedback loop is self-regulating. When there's a change, there's another change that, that is brought to bear to bring that other change, the first change, back into a normal range. So the body, when it produces symptoms, these are just messengers. These are clues that the body is out of balance and it's trying its best with its it's infinite wisdom compared to our intellect, intellectual knowledge and our few measurements. It's doing the best it can to, to balance that issue. So our view is we want to listen to the body. We want to look at the whole body. We want to understand more. What's the body trying to do? What is it having a challenge accomplishing? And rather than stopping it from trying to accomplish that with the in order to back off the symptoms associated with that effort. We want to help it accomplish the mission so that it's accomplished easier and there's not the effort that produces the symptoms. Either way, it's like, you know, in the water element, we have a choice, we go right or left. We can reduce a symptom by going left and using a drug to stop the heart from pumping the blood as hard and everybody in the community, said, including the patient, says, I don't feel so good. And it doesn't look so good. And, or we can go to the right and say, huh, well, see, the, the, the kidney, well, gee, you know, the blood tests don't show a kidney problem, but, you know, maybe he's got some chronic low back pain, maybe, uh, you know, there's subtle, maybe not even any symptoms. But when we begin to measure the information at a subconscious level, uh, measuring the meridian energies. Maybe we measure the, on the kidney meridian, on the baby toe, and that holographic information there is saying, ooh, yeah, yeah, that kidney's, you know, your right kidney is really not doing well. The energy's very low. It should be 50 and it's 10. It's 20% of what it should be. Oh, we can measure that as a biofeedback, as a communication with the body and, and see, oh, gee, uh, juniper or some homeopathic. The kidneys love homeopathics. They love to balance the flora in the gut because the source of the toxins in the blood mostly come from the colon. So, so with those kinds of modalities that are very gentle, the kidneys, oh, they filter better and the blood pressure comes down. Or there's natural substances 
that also re reduce uh, blood pressure without the side effects of uh, synthetics, without suppressive medication. The, the final, the sixth uh, quality of our medicine is it needs to be pastoral medicine because what's the point of healing the body and even developing your mind if your spirit is not developed for to sustain its function after the body dies? The life is short, but the life of the spirit is potentially infinite without end. And so with pastoral medicine, we look at how do we reduce suffering and at the same time expand your potential for, for navigation, for choices, for experience, for growth and development in this life so that you can build that immortal spirit body in a, in a, in a good and coherent way.